Hi there, this is David at Winco ID, and this is one of a series of presentations on barcode standards. And in this case, we're looking at using 2D barcodes in the HIBCC system. The Health Industry Business Community Council has a range of barcode standards that are used um, or strictly in the medical and medical device industry, very widely established there. And it is one of the standards that's been identified by the FDA for their UDI program. The key to HIBCC labeling is what's known as the Labeler Identification Code, the LIC, that is provided by HIBCC, rather like the GS1 company prefix comes from GS1 if you're using GS1 barcodes. There's a lot of flexibility in the HIBCC world. Both linear and 2D barcodes can be used, as well as RFID. But here, we're going to be very focused on 2D barcodes. One of the really good things for me is that um, barcodes can actually be encoded to ISO 15434 that we have a lot of experience with and have been using for a long time in the Department of Defense world. There's also flexibility in what barcode standards can be used. Data matrix code, QR code, ASDEC code, and also the micro PDF code can all be used to produce compliant um, HIBCC barcode labels. We're going to focus on the data matrix code, and here you can see exactly how the code is put together using data identifiers, issuing agency codes. If you're familiar with the DOD barcoding standards, all of this will be very familiar. But we'll go into this into a lot more detail in Bartender in just a, just a little while. So we're going to actually make one um, using Bartender. We're going to make an HIBCC 2D barcode using the data matrix barcode format. And we're going to encode it to ISO 15434. And just for the variable data that goes into our barcode, our LIC code is going to be A999. We've given our item a part number. Um, the packaging level, and I'll talk about that a little bit as we actually go through the design, is going to be unit of use, or just one item per package. It has a lot number, and the manufacturing date will be today. And I'm going to offset the expiration date by 100 days. This is the format that we're going to use. I'm going to follow this exactly. This came right out of the HIBCC specification. So that's enough PowerPoint. Let's get over to Bartender and actually do it. OK, here's my label to which I'm going to add a data matrix barcode to the HIBCC format. And what this is a basically a very much a medical type of barcode. You can see I've got a graphic of, of the product, um, its product name, the big painful syringe, expiration date, lot number, um, who's manufacturing it. And this is actually a linear um, HIBCC um, primary information barcode that I already have there. And I've also put these are the data fields that are going to go into the data matrix barcode I'm going to make that are all here as non-printable fields, but capturing that information. And we'll choose those one by one as I go through this. So the first job is to choose my barcode. And I'm going to choose a data matrix and just put it straight onto my label here. So if I double click on here to open the properties, and wait for a couple of minutes for my computer to catch up. And what I'm going to do is to add the data sources. The first thing I need to do is to add the message header, which is the open bracket, close parentheses, greater than symbol. And that's followed by the ASCII record separator. I have to click on this little symbol logo here. And in a couple of seconds, I can choose my record separator and insert it into here. I'm just working my way through the specification that next asks for 06 as the format number, followed by the group separator. And that's going to go into, into here. And then the first of the actual data identifiers is going to be 25p. I'm going to put that here. All this is fixed. It doesn't, it doesn't change. 
I'm going to close um, my symbols for now and I'm now going to add a, another data file, data source, which is going to be embedded data. And this is going to be the issuing agency code, which is going to be RH. Again, right from the standard. I add another piece of embedded data, and this one needs to be the LIC, the labeler code. And I simply choose it from the list I've already put into my label, and that's going to be followed by another piece of embedded data, and this needs to be the part number for the item. And I'm going to choose that from my list of, of data sources. Okay, so we're going doing good here already. That's going to be followed by a group separator symbol. It's embedded data. I choose the symbol screen and the group separator, which is followed by the data identifier for the packaging level, which is 26Q. Okay, I'm going to close this just to get it out of the way. And new data source, which is embedded data. And you can see I saved some time by setting these up already. That's going to be my packaging level, which is just a zero. And that's going to be followed, as just about everything is in these, by more embedded data and a group separator. So I have to open up the symbols again, choose my group separator, insert it into here. And the group separator is going to be followed by the code 1T, which is the data identifier for the lot number. So I start a new data source, which is embedded data. And from the list, I'm choosing batch or lot number. And that will be followed by yet another data source, which is still embedded data. And that's going to be a group separator. The good news is that usually once you've done this once, you simply edit labels you already have rather than constantly do them again. And I need to use the data identifier 16D, which is going to be for the date close this again, doing this on the laptop, there's not much room on my screen. And I start a new data source, which is going to be just using embedded data. And I'm going to choose the manufacture date. Okay, and that will automatically go into there. I have a new data source. We're actually getting to the end of this, that's getting to be good news, right? And this is going to be a group separator. And you can see my computer is not working very quickly at the moment. My lobbying for a new one is clearly not working very well. And the data identifier is going to be 14D, which is for the expiration date. So what I do, I start another. Um, here, which is going to be embedded data, and choose it from my list of expiration date. So I've actually finished with the information now. There's just one more thing I need to add, which is the end of the message. So I choose another. OK, I get rid of that, and back into my symbols. And we have a record separator followed by the end of transmission character. I'm going to close this. And what I'm going to do is to go into the human readable and turn it off at this point, just because it's not going to be in the format that we want. But there is my compliant barcode. And if I open up again, you can see here there's all the formatting characters, the information that goes into the 25p segment, the group separator followed by the zero for the packaging level, the batch code, 
the manufactured date and the expiration date all encoded in the way that it needs to be for this ISO standard. So it's pretty straightforward to do. All of these data fields could come from a database. They could be fixed text as, as they are in here. The dates can be calculated automatically or any way, any way that you like. So a lot of flexibility with this. But if we can help, give me a call or look me up at wincoid.com. And we're happy to help you with labels, software, printers, whatever you need for your FDA, UDI compliance needs. Thanks a lot.